Hello there folks, it's a rainy day here in the DC area and uh, we have had no shortage of these lately. Um, it's been a rainy end of spring, start to summer. It's the uh, third day of summer right now, which is super nice. I'm glad the season's finally here. It's felt like summer for a while for us. It's been 80s, 90s and humid for the last uh, month or more. So that, that feels like summer for us certainly, but um, it's nice that the season's finally here. We're in our growing season. Nice to see all the palms and exotic plants putting on some growth. Um, and yeah, really awesome. And um, a lot of people don't like the rain. Um, you know, uh, but it, it is what sustains everything. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, I, I don't know what it is, but I've always loved rain. I love cloudy days. I love rainy days. Of course I love sunny days, but, um, I don't know what it is about me, but I really do like the rain a lot. Um, not just for what it does, but I think I, I just like being in it. I like seeing it. I don't, I don't really don't know what it is. It's very strange. Uh, but I, I really do love it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I was working yesterday. Um, I do some yard work in the neighborhood. So like mowing, trimming, weeding, etc. And I was working at some people's houses, doing those things. And, uh, you know, it was just like downpouring. And I went in this one person's garage I was working for. And then finally, I just was like, you know what, I'm just gonna keep going. So I went on working in the rain. And I gotta tell you, after working in like 97 and humid, which it was the other day, which in the sun, that's brutal. Um, being in the rain really isn't so bad. It feels amazing. It's really refreshing. Um, you know, it's interesting, like in, in places like, like where I was in New Mexico, I really saw this. Uh, when you're in a dry climate, like a desert climate, when you go in the shade, it feels so much cooler because, you know, it's that dry air, the humid, you know, the, the, the heat doesn't linger the same way. So much of it's from just directly from the sun. Um, so it feels so much cooler in the shade. Here, when you're in the shade, yeah, it's cooler. But um, if it's 95 and humid out, you're not exactly going to feel refreshed by going in the shade. It's still really hot and humid out. So, um, you know, when it's cloudy, um, it does get cooler. Um, you know, that's like a, another added layer of shade. Um, but, uh, especially when it rains here, um, that's what really cools things off. And uh, you really see that, um, cause it's been, as I said, eighties, nineties, uh, and humid lately. We did have some nice seventies weather over the weekend, but that's kind of unusual for this time of year. It's kind of cool. Um, but today, yeah, just this rainy day, we've had the past two days rainy. It somehow brings the temperature down. Uh, low is in the fifties or sixties last night and it's high as like 71 today. It's about 67 right now. Absolutely ideal. This weather's perfect. I love it. And to have this little cool break right now is really awesome. And, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, it really cools things off. And, uh, yeah, I really, I really just, I don't know. I enjoy being out in the rain. I enjoy seeing it. And, um, you can see my coconut here. Uh, I put this thing in the front. Um, my mom put the phone behind the ferns to hide the pot a little bit, but um, these are deciduous ferns. I don't know the species, but uh, yeah, I brought it to the front because, uh, well, it's sunny spot. <clears throat> my backyard is very shaded because we have a huge silver maple overhanging it, but you can see the uh, front yard. You get all this, not, not, not sun or sunny right now, but you get all the sunlight coming in, which is nice. Um, and obviously they love sun and um, you know, they love the, our heat and humidity in the, in the warm season. The warm season is like, like summer and even like parts of spring and fall are ideal for coconuts. They love it here because it's like the tropics. And if they can get sun, these things grow a lot. This thing was a tiny spear when I got it. It didn't budge at all, all winter. Maybe the, maybe the slightest, but now it's opened up a whole, this tiny little spear and it's completely opened up now. Put out this huge new frond, doing awesome. And um, these things are pretty tough. Like I, I always say they're not only tougher, but they're hard, you know, Tougher, toughness and hardiness are different. I'm gonna make a separate video on this, but uh, I guess I'll just, in, in short, um, yeah, this thing's been out in the lower, low 50s. It was in the low 50s a couple nights ago, which is really strange because the highs were still in the 80s, but it went plunged down to the low 50s. When I took this thing outside, it was in the low 50s consistently at night, and uh, this thing took it absolutely fine. All these brown spots are just from it being inside over the winter, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, this is what happens. It's it's dry in there, it's cool in there. Um, but it, it took the, it took the, those temperatures absolutely fine, which, you know, some people would think they only, they couldn't, they couldn't tolerate that at all, but you'd be surprised. They're, they're tough, they're tough plants. I gotta get that ivy off. Oh, this ivy is constantly, cause I always remove it. I hate English ivy. I absolutely detest it. Um, you know, is it somewhat attractive? Sure. I mean, I, I've just been bred to hate it, um, as I should, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Um, but, um, you know, so I never would ever think of it as attractive because when I see it, I just think weed and I see, I, 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 I think of it as a weed. Um, and when I, when I, uh, you know, every time I, um, every time I, uh, I, I see it, yeah, I can't, I can't, I don't think of it as beautiful, but I guess people feel, feel fine attractive, of course. 
but uh, it's horribly invasive. Don't ever plant it, I would say, in any climate, because it's almost like, it's a kind of plant that's like sort of invasive even in its own habitat, just because it's been planted. I don't even understand that, uh, how like, just because it's been planted a little more, now it's becoming almost invasive in its native habitat. Um, but don't, I would say never ever plant English ivy, no matter what climate you're in. Uh, horrible plant, even in the desert, uh, you know, if given water, which presumably you would, um, it can become sort of invasive even out by LA. I've seen English ivy, not in the woods, but you'll see it planted a lot. Don't do that. Um, that's my advice. It, 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 trust me, whatever benefits it has are vastly outweighed by the negatives. Um, I can speak from experience. I always rip it out, but, um, my neighbor leaves it in on, on, on their side. So it just grows back and starts filling in our side, which is not good. Uh, anyways, this seedling here, I put these sticks in the ground to sort of block people from, I don't know if they mowed it or, or if it keeps getting chewed or what. I, we, I think it just got mowed over or something. But uh, I just put the stick back because the whole thing got chopped over. And this thing was literally cut back all the way to the ground, like to the point I couldn't even see it. And it's already come back that much, which is really nice. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Um, I had the same thing with one in the front. This is one of my mystery seedlings. I think it's a Camerops, hopefully, because I scattered some Camerops back here. It looks kind of like a washi a little bit. Definitely not, because I never scattered any washi seeds back here. And I'm almost certain I'm like, I'm, I mean, I'm, yeah, I am certain that I did not plant this. This is uh, from, from seed I scattered. So um, yeah, I, I think Camerops, <coughs> actually, yeah, it looks very unique. Looks nothing like Sable Miner. Obviously it's this light green, complete opposite of Sable Miner. Doesn't look like a washi exactly. Um, it definitely looks different because I have those flipper seedlings over there and um, definitely not a tracky. So almost certain that's camera ops. Really hope it is. That'd be awesome. Um, over here, you can see the figs here. I'm going to go around here just because it's so wet. Here are my washi seedlings I transplanted. I know they look really messy, which they are, but oh God, wow. Get that water out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, some of them might die, but there are just so many of them that I just did a hasty... I hastily transplanted them. Um, this thing's already grown more since I transplanted it. Sable Miner doing well. You can see that it's got a nice frond to it and recovering nicely. Um, after it just something, the other spot just, I don't know what it was, probably getting choked out by the other plants. It was not cold damage. That's not how cold damage appears. It doesn't appear in the middle of the frond. Um, it's very strange though. Um, anyways, Tragi uh, Fortunae doing well. Uh, this thing, I, I, I want to mark the spear to see how much it grows because this spear has opened up like in the past few days. Absolutely, um, you know, tons of growth. It's crazy. This whole spear, as I mentioned, pushed out in the last week or two. Uh, this whole frond, I mean, and uh, just doing really well. And uh, all my seedlings here, these are a lot of these are tracky. We got Sable Birmingham in there. Um, these ones are all tracky. Oh, this one, yeah, this one, I don't know if it'll make it. It'll be interesting to see. Um, and then we got some Sable Miner there. Sable Miner. Um, these things, since the spear pull, which was only a few weeks ago, or maybe, I don't think it was a month, I mean, it's probably less than a month ago, maybe it was a month ago, but I already pushed out this one, which is the burnt frond, where, where the spear pull, you know, which is, that's where the spear pull uh, happened. So it pushed out the stunted frond, and then it pushed out this beautiful new frond here, and it's already pushing out a, a new spear. So lots of growth on this thing. This thing also pushed out this one, and uh, it's got this big spear about to open, huge thing. And then it's got a new spear coming, so really nice. And I trimmed off the brown, that dead frond. Um, and then Sable Miner, of course, doing well. All these seedlings are doing well. Uh, I'm trying to get the liriope out in here, and I need to weed this also. Um, but thankfully, I got most of them. This is all liriope in here. It all, this thing grows back so quickly. Don't pl I, I recommend not planting liriope either, either, unless you want it to completely take over your yard. Not, not I don't think it's as invasive. Uh, I do see it in the woods occasionally, so. It definitely spreads. I mean, it's probably it's probably like a mild to moderate invasive, um, but yeah, I wouldn't. Not my favorite plant. Um, Save a miner there, and uh, Liriope, by the way, is this grass. You'll see some of it here. There's like a tiny remnant of it, which I gotta rip out. Uh, and then this thing, uh, already, again, um, just the warm weather just does wonders, of course. Uh, and uh, this thing already, like in the past week, basically pushed out this, this whole thing went from being a spear, completely opening up. Um, that I think is a perfect example of that. This is clearly not someone, you know, people were suggesting that might be like a Fortunae variety or something. Clearly not. It looks nothing like Fortunae. Look at that frond. Crazy. This is like a lightest frond I've seen. It'll probably darken maybe as it grows. And then, the, yeah, it's got a bit, yeah, you can clearly see the silverish backside to it there. Looking absolutely awesome. That almost looks like, like a tricarpus, uh, 
like a princeps or manipur a little bit. Um, I don't know my trackies that well besides like the more common ones because I don't have any of the other ones, uh, but I'd love to get some more rare species at some point to try. I'm gonna get a shot of that. Looking great. And you can see the figs there. This is, uh, I think it's Ficus carica, the, just the common fig, deciduous species. Um, I don't know if any evergreen figs can grow here. Probably not. I don't know if, I don't know my fig species that well. I don't know if any other fig species can grow here, but this is our huge one. Absolutely massive. This thing, I think, froze back to the ground in 2014, grew back very quickly, and is now producing lots of figs again. And uh, that's really nice. This, I think, might also be a camera op seedling. I'm not exactly sure. It looks a little bit like a tracky seedling, but it's definitely not. I don't think I'm almost certain I didn't plant it because I wouldn't plant there because this is where I walk through. Somehow I haven't stepped on it, but I planted these ones. These are trackies. I've got one here looking great and another one there doing well. So, uh, yeah, that's the story. Sable palmetto seedlings there. Uh, that's, uh, so these are sable palmetto here and then this is just a natural, you can see how it's sticking up there. That's just a naturalized uh, sable minor seedling from this seed I scattered. Anyways, that's the story, guys. Just want to share that with you. And, um, oh, I forgot to mention, I, I, uh, I messed up when I was filming last time. And uh, I started going off on a tangent about coconut palms, and I realized that'd probably be better for another video. So I, I, I stopped and then I refilmed this. And I mentioned in the last video, but I forgot to mention here, that I will be headed to um, to LA uh, today. I, I, our, our flight this afternoon. Uh, I know it's almost like I live there at this point, <laughs> but. Um, I'm part of an allergy clinic out there. For, for those of you who don't know, that's why I go out there. I don't just go out there for palms. Uh, I, I, I would. I, I love it out there. Um, I absolutely love it. But uh, the reason I go out there is for this allergy clinic. And um, turns out, you know, as you may know, I went out there last time, got a nice day there, was feeling a little under the weather, couldn't go to the appointment, of course, because I was feeling sick. Turns out I had COVID. That was not good at all. Um, but thankfully, uh, that's been done with for a while. And um, I don't have COVID. I'm not sick currently. So heading back out there, fingers crossed, nothing happens on the way out. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, another trip to LA, not exactly the worst thing, right? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm super excited. And uh, yeah, I, I think it'll be a, there'll be a big pause between this appointment and the next one, because you know, it's just how the program works. So I won't be going out for another many months after that. But um, I'm super excited to, just to, to go around. We got one day after the appointment, we are just there for a day and then we fly back. So day of the appointment, probably go around see some stuff. And uh, yeah, hopefully get some palmy videos in there. Um, that's just that, that that's just my idea of heaven. I don't know about you guys. Some people hate LA. Um, you know, LA is quirky uh, and unique. I absolutely love it. I love the surrounding areas too. I feel like the uh, the um, stereotype of of the superficiality. I feel like that's a very small percentage of LA. I I don't like the superficiality at all um, of LA uh, of the not of LA, but of like that sort of Hollywood superficiality stereotype. It does exist, and I don't like it, but. I'm not, you know, that, that's not a reason I would live, I would live somewhere. But, um, you know, if you go around, once you get out of Beverly Hills, and I think Beverly Hills is pretty cool looking, but um, once you get out of there um, and go to like to the, you know, the real heart of LA um, and all the other places, Santa Monica, Long Beach, anywhere around the LA area, you realize that uh, it's, you know, it's a lot more than Hollywood uh, down there. Um, you know, it's, it's a huge population center and um, I just absolutely love it. It's such a cool climate. Uh, it's like a place... <laughs> It's a place that almost feels like all these palms and stuff shouldn't grow. You know, it's dry. The winters are kind of cool, but you got all these tropical palms growing. People trying coconut palms and everything out there. Uh, I, I almost consider it the zone pushing capital. Uh, um, maybe not of the world. I don't know. Uh, but uh, because, you know, it's just so so much easier to zone push with palms that are sort of marginal there than it is in Florida where the palms will do great nine out of 10 winters and then you have a bad freeze. Um, of course, more palms do, you know, you'll have more tropical palms do well in Florida and parts of Florida, um, but it's just different. And I think as LA is a more consistent climate, uh, but also a cool climate, it makes zone pushing easier um, for some species. And it's just really fascinating to see all the tropical species people get away with there. Um, I, I love it. And uh, yeah, that's the story folks. Anyways, this video is supposed to be out of the rain, um, but yeah, we, we're getting quite a bit of rain. I don't know what the measurement is. I want to get one of those rain measuring cups, uh, you know, those things people have out. Um, I, yeah, I never really track precipitation. I think DC average is like 37 inches a year, something like that, which is above national average. I believe, it was definitely above national average. I think we're two inches above national average or something. Um, so you know, by no means a rainforest climate. I think rainforest is traditionally 50 inches or more. Um, but 
definitely a wet climate here. Um, I'd say, you know, on an average week, you'll definitely get some rain. And uh, this past week, we just got downpours of rain. So, yeah. But you know what? It makes the plants grow. I love it. So, yeah. Can't complain with that. But I'm headed out to L.A. where it's going to be nice, warm, sunny, and uh, just perfect. So, can't wait for that. Stay tuned, folks. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Have a good one. And, uh, yeah. Take care, folks.